next step. Now I place the device itself, first flushing the balloon to test integrity, advancing the orange peel away sheath over the atraumatic tip and flushing the A-line. The orange tip is engaged to the valve of the sheath and the actual blue shaft of the catheter advanced into the aorta to the pre-measured position which I have determined with external measurements. The balloon is then insufflated and um, if the arterial line is utilized you should see a very gratifying response in the pressure above the balloon for those patients who will respond to Reboa utilization. I would encourage all who utilize Reboa that the inflation is not the time to uh, pat yourself on the back. You need to be moving expeditiously to a, an arena where you can achieve definitive hemorrhage control, be that the operative theater for abdominal sources or potentially in interventional radiology for hemorrhagic sources uh, of the pelvis. How long can the balloon stay up should be, should be the first question on your mind. This is not well defined, uh, but it has been suggested that 30 minutes for zone 1 is the upper limit of what is reasonable and 60 minutes for zone 3 uh, is likewise the upper limit that should be considered. Although this is uh, largely unknown, it is important to recognize. It's also important to emphasize communication as the anesthesiology team and the rest of the trauma team will not see aortic clamps sticking out of the chest or the abdomen as they might with the more traditional means of aortic occlusion. And a simple catheter in the common femoral artery may appear like a triple lumen uh, to their observation. Subsequently, communicate to them that the aorta is indeed uh, occluded and that ischemic burden is building as you speak. The best course suggests that um, balloon desufflation, ultimately when you would have achieved definitive hemorrhage control, be undertaken under five minutes. But patient toleration should really be your guide here, as some patients will not tolerate uh, that time period, may require a more prolonged period of occlusion, intermittent occlusion, or technique which I'll describe, which I use now routinely, uh, called partial Reboa, uh, that I utilize in a very early setting after Reboa deployment. For the sake of time, I will not be able to describe every element of partial Reboa here, but I refer all to the excellent publication in Journal of Trauma by Austin Johnson describing the technique that was developed in our research lab at David Grant Medical Center and that I utilize clinically in my practice at UC Davis and at other institutions that I have worked. To determine if you have achieved partial occlusion, however, you'll have to have some ability to monitor the blood pressure below the balloon. This can be done very crudely with manual palpation during exploratory laparotomy. I let the balloon down just until I feel the first impulse of a pulse in the aorta of common iliacs in this setting. But a more refined way to do this would be either a contralateral femoral arterial line, which can take place, or simply using a slightly larger ipsilateral femoral sheath. In my practice, I employ an 8 French sheet for this purpose, as I'll uh, demonstrate. The technique is demonstrated in this porcine hemorrhagic model, and you, you can see here the Reboa is already in place, and what we've done is taken the side port of the 8 French sheath, which I commonly utilize in my clinical practice, and transduce this to an A-line in order to measure blood pressure below the balloon. I also place a three-way stopcock and a 3 to 5 cc syringe at a right angle to the larger syringe used for insufflation as I find this affords me a more precise control of balloon desufflation to achieve partial Reboa. After 10 minutes of subsequent full occlusion to afford resuscitation initiation and clot formation, I then utilize this smaller syringe to extract a half cc at a time until I obtain a normotensive state above the balloon and a hypotensive state below the balloon. Once I've completed the case and achieved surgical control of hemorrhage, the balloon removal is actually quite simple. It is simply uh, maximally deflated and extracted through the 7 French sheath. Comparatively, sheath removal can be a more concerning process. In my practice, I utilize routine angiogram to demonstrate the absence of thrombosis or distal embolism, which can occur for a variety of re reasons related to our active resuscitation and patient physiology and anatomy. I would encourage anyone utilizing Reboa to never leave the OR without confirming distal perfusion by either palpation or Doppler utilization. Once distal perfusion has been confirmed, the 7 French access affords us a variety of different options for subsequent closure. Open repair, which was required for the 12 French access utilized with CODA, is a perfectly acceptable option, as are a variety of percutaneous closure devices commonly used in vascular surgery and interventional radiology. Ultimately, you can simply hold pressure as well, and this is one of the attractive elements of the ER Reboa utilization. 
A general rule of thumb is to multiply the sheath size by three minutes. However, I would encourage that uh, in the setting of coagulopathy, either sheath removal will be deferred or pressure be held longer. And I will reemphasize here that you should continually reassess the limb in both the operative theater and after completion when the patient is in the intensive care unit.